All right, guys, just before I start on what I call the muffin top, which is the extension onto the um, handle side or the drive side of this uh, pattern set, um, this is what I machined up yesterday. This was well, just on nine and a half hours uh, machined this one out. A little bit less than 11 hours for the first one. But uh, as you can see, we've got a cavity in here that allows that extra top, which is going to have our gearbox components inside. And uh, I couldn't make this all in one piece, as you saw from the first video, because my uh, my height under here is too small. So we've had to slice this up and redo it. And I've had to do that many times with other patterns that I've had to make as well. Um, there's the stock ready to go. But in the floor of this, when it's finished machining, I've only got around about five millimeters of thickness, which isn't enough for me to be able to get fasteners on. So what I do on my wasteboard is I use the super glue and I glue that down and put weights on it and let that sit there for at least half an hour before I start. So we're at that point at the moment. So um, just a little tip as to what I do when I can't get stuff screwed down or fastened down or clamped down. Uh, super glue does a good job and when we peel this off it comes off reasonably easy just take some little sections of the chipboard out with that wasteboard when we do remove it all right we're going to get this on the go we might have a bit of a look at this um, throughout the machining process this is a bit of mahogany that i've got here it's been well and truly seasoned this stuff but um yep we'll get a go all right see you in a tick guys Alright, we finished the, uh, the roughing pass on this uh, mushroom top and you can clearly see the steps during that roughing pass to allow us to cut a nice smooth taper with our finishing tool. You can see the various mounts up here for uh, spring anger and uh, also for the pawl assembly. Alright, let's get the, uh, the ball nose in place and uh, we'll start our finishing. All right, just a couple of hard blows with a hammer on a, a block of softwood, and uh, as you can see, we we'll release it from the uh, from the wasteboard. So that's it completed. Uh, the muffin top for this part of the pattern, and uh, what I've done is I've actually clamped the two halves together to stop them from warping, and uh, we leave that like that until we're ready to start uh, painting. So, 
So you can see that a bit overhauled, but it's a perfect match. All right, we'll clean up that muffin top and we'll sit that in place and we'll see how it all goes. All right, so we've got the muffin top sitting into place now. And uh, you can, well, I can't feel the transition on this at all. It's uh, spot on. Now I've done no finishing on this as yet, but what I have done is I've just used my little Dremel. I don't know if you can see that there but I've undercut and removed the radiuses right out of here so there's nothing protruding up that's going to uh, prevent this from sitting down nice and flat and I'm really really happy with that that is absolutely perfect very very happy with that result Maybe a couple of things we might have to look at, particularly when we're ramming the sand up, and it's something I should have maybe looked at with the design, is I've got this, this pocket in here, and there's lots of taper on here, but the sand tends to sort of jam in on these sorts of spaces. So what I might have to do is just create a little insert that will run between those two. We can uh, fill that area, and we'll just have to see how that goes when we're doing the ram up. But I'll, uh, while I haven't got this stuck down yet, I'm, I'm going to go through and just uh, sand this out. Maybe put a little bit of bog in there to take some of the ridges out and then sand them back smooth. But uh, gosh, other than that, it's a, it's a nice fit up. Alright guys, well I'll get all that prepped and then I'll show you what that looks like before we, uh, before we put the high build putty on. We'll get this all glued down as well, ready to go. Alright guys. We'll see you soon. All right, guys, the next pattern I need to make is this cover plate, and this will be the last of the uh, the patterns that I have to do. So let's have a, a quick look at that one. So that's in there. So basically, it's it's fairly straightforward, this one. You can could, you could make this quite comfortably without a CNC um, or requiring a CNC. So flat plate, radius, and a couple of bosses that, uh, that pop up. So I've created the... Um, the pattern for this all right and here's the pattern so uh, this one here I have uh, derived it and scaled it up um, we've also added some thickness to the bosses and also to the base so that we can uh, machine out that face and I've also put draft all the way around so that we can remove it out of the sand so um, I've put that into my uh, CNC software and I've coded it created all my tool paths so that one's ready to go and this will be the last the last pattern I think one of the core boxes after this one all right, guys, we'll see you soon. All right, that's the uh, cover pattern machined out. Um, you'll see the insert or the build-up that I've put in there, which is just pine, and this is just a bit of 12 mil plywood that I've used for the base. And uh, yeah, it's come up really, really well again. All right, we'll get that unscrewed, and we'll see how that fits in with everything else, eh? All right, send it to you. Well, I was hoping to take this off the machine and bring it over to the uh, to the muffin top and put it on and tell you it's a perfect part and a perfect fit, but it's not. It's uh, about four millimeters too short in the length and also a tad on the width as well. So something's happened here. When I created these parts, I do what's called a derived part and I scale it up one and a half percent to accommodate for the shrinkage. But for some reason, this is machined out one to one. Now I'm sure I did upload the derived part. Maybe I didn't, maybe I did. But we need to go back and find out what I've done wrong. Um, fortunately, it's only a small part. It, it machines up very, very quickly. So we'll find out what the issue is. Um, redo our coating. Get a little bit of stock made up. And uh, 
we'll put it back in the CNC and we'll uh, we'll knock it out. These things happen. Anyway, we'll learn by them. Move on. All right, guys. We'll catch you in the tick. All right, guys. Back again. That was the one that we made uh, incorrectly. And what I had done is I'd created uh, or I'd selected the the wrong file to create the IG's file from. So it um, doesn't help. Uh, that was um, prior to scaling up for uh, shrinkage. This is the one I've just finished now. And that is a perfect fit. So very happy with the end result. I also made a little bit of a change on this one as well. The um, the block that I, I glued down on here, I used glue right through the whole thing. And as you can see, it sort of left a bit of a, a strange imprint there. Whereas this one here, uh, I only put the glue on where it was required. And just with a bit of um, sandpaper, just took off any furry bits. And that's worked out so much better. So, uh, yeah, very happy with that. All right, so we've got all of our patterns now complete. I now need to move on to the core boxes. So uh, I'll get um, some material glued up and uh, clamped together to uh, create the stock, and then uh, we'll start some more uh, some more machining. All right, guys, I'll see you soon. Right, we've got the next bit of uh, stock all laminated up to create um, one of the core halves, and uh, I've got the other stock sitting on the CNC at the moment. So we'll head over there. We'll get that all trued up and. Uh, We'll get cutting. All right, guys, so here we are on the CNC router. And I've got this stock that's been glued up that's been sitting for uh, over a week now on the clamps. Um, you'll notice that it does have a bit of a rock on it. Now, we're going to clamp this down or screw this down in two spots only. We don't want to stretch this and straighten it out because it will only spring back again. Um, we want to try and keep that as neutral as we possibly can. So we'll get that screwed down. I'll run the face over it, face and cut over it flip it over, run the face and cut over it, set the coat up and uh, and we'll start cutting these through there. Rightio, so I've machined the top down nice and flat, there's no wobble in that now, I've got that screwed down at, at four corner points. I've done my zeroing out, this is my zero, X and Y and Z at that point there. Uh, I've loaded the, uh, the G-code. I'm ready to make a start. All right, let's get going with the first core, or the first half. All right, guys, so that's the, uh, the first of the cores all roughed out. This is on the handle side. It's got the little uh, dugout inside there, which is going to create a cavity for us for our, uh, our gear wheel. All right, we'll get our finishing ball mill set up now and uh, we'll start the finishing passes. Well, it took about, uh, it was less than half an hour to cut all that out. I have up the feed rates on these now that I'm getting a little bit more comfortable with my machine again. It's been a long time since I've run this, so it's uh, no, very happy with that. All right, we'll get, uh, we'll get things zeroed up and uh, we'll get it on the go for the finishing. Just finished the uh, first half of the core box set, and that has come up beautifully. Really, really happy with that. And honestly, that took around three hours from roughing to finishing, so it's pretty quick. 
while this has been going on, I've been doing other other work in the workshop. So, um, yeah, that's come up really well. Really happy with it. All right, I'll get this off. Uh, I've got the other bit of stock still gluing at the moment. I should have done that earlier on in the week, but I didn't get a chance. So uh, when that uh, glue's gone off, um, we'll get it up. We'll face uh, top and bottom, and we'll go through the same process and, uh, and cut out the, uh, the second half of the core box. All right, guys. I'll see you soon. Alright guys, that's the two core boxes straight off the uh, CNC. I haven't touched these with any sandpaper or done any finishing on those at all. That's that's as they came off the machine and yeah, they're very, very good. So the plan with this is is that um, I create two cores, left and right, and uh, and I glue those together and that creates the core to go inside the, uh, inside the mould. Um, there is other ways that you can create the cores from this, I can cut these through down here at the bottom and also at the top, put the two halves together and then ram the sand through bottom and through the top and create a solid single core. Um, that works out really well but sometimes they're a little bit hard to get apart. Um, because these sticks, if you like, are so long, I may put some reinforcing bars in there to give them a bit of stiffness. Very, very cool. Very, very you got to be very careful when you do put anything into a core that you've got to be able to make sure you can get it out of the casting when it's complete. So uh, just something to bear in mind. I've been stuck one day with a with a rather large casting I did, and I couldn't get the I couldn't get the wires out. It was very very hard. It took a lot of a lot of effort and a lot of time. Um, let's have a look at how the patterns are coming along now, and uh, we're well advanced with those at the moment. So we'll go and have a quick. All right. So there's our patterns. Um, as I mentioned. I've glued them up and top onto that, and as I said, that's, that's come up beautifully. So just use a bit of builder's bog around here just to smooth out the transition points on that. But other than that, it's not going to need an awful lot to get that uh, to get that right. <coughs> that's the non-drive side. That was the first one we did, and uh, yep, that's come up very well. I've just sprayed um, high build putty over these uh, just to clean them up, and I'll give them a light sanding just to take out any little ridges that are in them. But these aren't going to need a lot of work to, uh, to get them cleaned up. And uh, obviously that's our, our gearbox cover. So I've given that a bit of a sand up, a bit of a few more coats. Let's see how this sort of all goes together. A bit of an idea of what the size is going to be when, we're, uh, when we've got the castings in hand. Alright, so that's everything roughly together as best as I can hold it anyway. But let's sort of see the size of this. This is going to weigh around about 8 kilo when it's finished. So I've got to make sure I've got at least 11 to 12 kilo on the melt to cover the risers and the runners that we need to, uh, to need to feed this and uh, and bend it off. All right, I thought I'd just give you a little bit of an update of where we're at with this. It, it is coming along slowly. Work is taking up an awful lot of my time at the moment. They're uh, very long hours and I, I get home from work. It's a five o'clock start in the morning and, and I'm not home before six. And, uh, that's sort of turning out to be six days a week at the moment. So I'm pretty tired when I get home and I don't really feel like coming out to do too much. So workshop uh, workshop time is, uh, is dropping right off at the moment. But we'll keep ticking away at this, so just bear with me. We will get there. Um, I'm very happy with the progress so far. I think this is going to work out really, really well. Uh, it's, going to be a, it's going to be a good design, this one. All right, guys, we'll, uh, we'll catch up with you very, very soon.